Come on. Here we go. Okay. Watch it all. That's the real deal. This is crap, kid. Going to. My name is Scott. Can you hold this? Yep. Scott Allen Marquis. I've been on this for all my life since I was 19 or 20 years of old. 20 years of age. I used to live in Florida. Really? Yeah, really. No, I was down there on the very, very tip, the southernmost point. Key West, Florida, where all the gay bars and gay nightclubs were found. That's where all the parties were. I can't help myself. I gotta have it. I'm drinking, I'm smoking, I'm playing, I'm blood. And what, what led to you becoming homeless? Well, like, what were you doing yeah, prior? I just couldn't stand to pay rent. I just didn't want to take anything that I made on a job or on a job site or anything. I'd take that paycheck and throw it away on an apartment just to pay, to sleep there on a mattress overnight or night at you know, To me, that seemed like such a damn waste. I wanted to take all of that money from that paycheck to go out and play. Kind of like you have been so. The second best thing to party is going places. You get out of the country, the United States of America, do it. Go places, travel. Gotcha. I was living in millionaires' homes that had invited me in to do nothing more than that, but because they were hella long. I've been homeless since 1978, until today. And I'm still homeless today. Today I'm refusing, flat refusing, protesting the sign of the world to getting anything and everything that has anything to do with paying a, a job, a dollar's worth of rent. I really don't want to go back to apartment though. I just can't stand it. I don't want a manager at the desk to be able to tell me in my apartment what I can and what I can't do. And if I can't buy a four bedroom, four bath house in a three, in three uh, county uh, subdivision of the suburbs of California like normal people, I can't ever see myself as buying one of those so I'm never going to make how do you think the the average person treats you? An average person walking down the road? Whoa, hell of a lot of respect only because, not because of homeless, but because they see something somehow, something somehow or something somewhere has got to change for you, this guy in the wheelchair, that you can get the hell off of those city streets. And for me alone. But you're not going to. Right. No, I'm going to stay out of apartment life. Right. Or condominium life. I want a real house or townhouse overlooking the cliffs, maybe with a view of the ocean, something real, something expensive, obviously. Uh, I think people think that I've got to do something to get out of here. So I think, you know what? I think they think that everything's going to be all right. For me. That's what they but they like to think that. Right. It's right. a very positive feedback. People aren't feeling sorry for it. They aren't feeling sorry for you at all. They're just trying to figure out what would be the best way for you to get out of that. I'm trying to go over here by the post office and further down by Van Ness Street. I've got these little doorways that I've selected for myself. They're not too far away from anything, anywhere that if you have to scream really loud, someone's going to hear you too. Because you got to be careful. You can't go into it. No. Now, how much, how much money do you make like a day on an average I day? Make, I don't make any more than fifty or sixty dollars a day. Probably not even forty in a year. But Saturdays and Sundays I make a lot more. And people will give me more food than I can buy. You see, you are just waiting for someone to give me their sandwiches from their lunch, which they keep in the box and they just hand me the box and I eat that. Hell, I'm full for the rest of the day anyways because they eat this. And what are you, you going to do with that money though? I'm going to actually buy drugs for the sake of the drugs. But even though I buy illegal drugs and whatnot, I still buy myself. Knickknacks, what I have to get is like fingernail clippers, toenail clippers, hairbrush, cologne, I'll spray that on. So I'll get everything that concerns with like grooming aids or health products, maybe even a jar of vitamins. But either one I do, I still keep enough money left over for myself to get high. But I'll get some beers or some wine coolers and I'll get that crack. Uh oh, did I say it? Yes, yeah, crack cocaine. 
And I said, crystal methamphetamine, sometimes I can get a nickel bag of weeds because they don't know me. They right. do me favors because I'm the guy in the wheelchair. Right. Only a guy in a wheelchair like me can get a low-priced $5 bag of crystal. You can't get methamphetamine for under 20 dollars But I get nickels and dime. Or they can go all the way and do the bomb. When I call it bomb, shifting gears and do heroin itself. It comes and looks like a little fish's eye. This is a crack bite, right? And this is the Brillo inside. But essentially, I'm not addicted. It's the funniest thing. I am such a party animal, mogul, like I'm such a tough break. But I keep doing it because I meet the most interesting guys, gals and guys, boys and girls. All these street people are hell interesting to me. And for the life of me, the more weird it is to me, the more fascination I derive. <laughs> it's excitement, it's thrills, and through drugs, I meet the most interesting, scathing maybe, but interesting people from around the country and around the world. It's a common breaker, it's a common icebreaker for meeting. I can say hi to a guy that I don't even know from Adam, and that's because he's losing crack right now. And we just go off in class together and make a couple of years and such chit chat about politics here. It's a lot of fun. Hi. All right. All right. I'll see you Thank later. You, Hot. <laughs> Boom. Stop. I'm out. <laughs>